Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cambridge Union Society today. I see so many new faces, but also so many faces of returning members. It's great to meet you all again tonight. Before we start, I'd like to thank the sponsors of tonight's event. Nesta and Silicon Valley Connect have been linking the valley to the world. Tonight's motion is this House believes that Europe, not Silicon Valley, will become the best place to build the future billion dollar companies. Our first speaker, Bill Janeway. Bill's experience encompasses over 30 years of practical finance, investment, <coughs> banking, venture capital in the US and Europe. He's worked for, he's advised Warburg Pinkers and he's initiated and managed um, the implementation of a global strategy for IT. He's been involved in DEA Systems, Veritas Software, Fortman, O'Reilly Media, Nouns, and White Fit. He's also been a dedicated supporter of the University of Cambridge. So please give a warm round of applause. Five years after I took my doctorate here in this August University, I began commuting to Silicon Valley, which I did for 25 years, and my garments today, my nether parts, are tethered to the valley, as you see. Five years after declaring victory from that time in the valley, five years ago, six years ago, uh, and I have to give Cambridge full credit for the wit and wisdom to have done so because I wrote my dissertation on 1929, and in 1999, I realized that I had seen this movie before. So I returned to Cambridge, and in fact, have engaged from an academic and scholarly distance in the process of evaluating and analyzing in some gory detail what my colleagues, my peers, my friends have been doing in the American venture capital industry over the 35 years that I've been involved with it. The first... Uh, I'm actually going to cheat and give you some data, some actual hard, statistically significant findings from a proprietary database of more than 200 U.S. venture funds over the period from 1980 to the year 2000. The first message is that that industry has actually delivered returns that are not very good. Our sample is, in fact, twice as good as the aggregate industry measures of cash on cash returns. Over this period, the 200 funds which we have evaluated, I and my colleague Michael McKenzie, have actually delivered returns that are just about equivalent in the median fund to the NASDAQ average, but they've done so with three times the volatility. For those of you here who are interested in pursuing the rapidly diminishing number of jobs as quants in the city. That means that the sharp ratio is terrible. What in fact this illustrates is the <coughs> fundamental difference in the world of investment management, which includes venture capital and includes particularly the American venture capital industry, the difference between alpha and schmalpha. <laughs> alpha is the return you earn from being smarter than the market. Schmalpha is the return you earn from being smarter than your clients. <laughs> now, not only are these returns not terribly impressive, what we have actually been able to document is the dirty secret we all have known in the business. The returns are radically dependent on the state of the public equity market and specifically the IPO market. My colleagues and I, with enormous dedication, have gone through every quarter since 1980 and evaluated the IPO market in terms of the number of venture-backed IPOs and the profitability or lack thereof of the venture-backed companies going public. And we've given a ranking to each of them. One for a poor market, two for a decent market, three for a good market, and four for the bubble, for the hot market. And then we look at those funds in terms of the cash-weighted investment period and exit period, and we give them a score. The best score is you're investing at a time when the market is dead, 
You're harvesting when the market is hot. That's a score of plus three. The worst score when the wind is in your face is minus three. Now, when we look at all those funds, when the index is less than minus one, when you're investing with the wind in your face, the median return for the, all of these 200 funds, twice as good as the industry, is minus 16%, IRR, rate of return. With the wind at your back, when the score is better than plus one, the median return is 19%, the average return is 31%, and as we all know, everyone's a genius in a bull market. Now, the dependence on the IPO market, and this is where I roll towards the conclusion, which will be devastating for the other side. The dependence on the IPO market is clear. The state of the U.S. IPO market can also be documented through the last 25 years. The number of IPOs rises and falls. The profitability rises and falls. The time to be able to go public rises and falls. One number goes up and up and up. And that number is the average offering size, 25 million in 2007 dollars, 88 million so far this year. That's the median IPO offering. When you do the reverse arithmetic, it means to be able to go public, you must have a company that's at least 100 million dollars in revenue to be able to generate a transaction of that scale. What's more, it has to be profitable after paying the Sarbanes-Oxley tax for governance, as it were. What that in turn means is that very few venture-backed companies are going to go public. In this context, the rational decision for the venture capitalist is to sell the project after the B round. That means after you, you plug it in and it lights up and a couple of people have raised their hand and said, yes, I'll buy one or two of those. You don't try to build a business. You don't invest in marketing, sales, channels, customer service you pass it on to a big company. In effect, the biotech model of distributed R&D becomes a standard for the industry. For this economic role, the U.S. venture capital industry is grotesquely overcapitalized, grossly too much money. The industry faces a very simple choice. Either give the money back, not likely to happen, or find a black hole that can absorb an infinite amount of capital. Do I hear alternative energy? Do I hear ethanol? <laughs> into which we can pour the money while continuing to earn the management fees and the devil and our junior partners will worry about the returns. Thank you very much. <laughs>